So we are at the Mbutala uh, bus station. And now there is the moment that we don't understand which bus we have to take, like every time, because they don't speak English or just a little. Uh, the problem is that we have to go to Palangoda. Uh, apparently the bus is yet to come, uh, from what we understood. So we are waiting here 10 minutes, or we have to catch number 10. I didn't get that. <laughs> it was a 10. <laughs> I don't know what was that, so let's wait. This one's coming, yeah. Thank you. Amaina. Hi guys, welcome back in this week episode. The guy with the green t-shirt is the head guy of a Spokuna, a bush camp that will be my home for the next few days. After reaching the meeting point, we have been given our walking sticks and start our hike in the jungle to reach the place. Actually, that has not been the first time I had to hike to reach a place to sleep, but I remember the terrifying guest house in Italy, which is now technically and luckily closed. This place was not meant to be that bad, mainly because, unlikely the other, it had all the the food I was gonna eat in the following days. So we started the hike with the guide insisting me to wear my shoes. I thought that was because of the hike itself. Definitely not for the fact that the forest was infested with leeches. Hiking with the crocs was not the best idea. Ah, wow, oh my god. So should I, I apply it like? Yeah. Okay. I put it over? Yeah. You want? I don't have any. So we have just a bit of food. You can use it. Is it a bedroom? Oh, wow, nice. And from so we just reached the place where we'll be spending the next few days literally inside the forest this is a beautiful beautiful location the place is surrounded by the forest so technically we can see elephants from here electrified fence but they told us that elephants are very smart so they kind of uh, throw down trees to take down the fence and so they can walk in so they had quite a problems with that now it just started raining and the sound from inside the lodge is beautiful because you can feel the rain popping on your head uh, the reason why we came here is because uh, we joined the eco team same stay we've been in Yala National Park. Uh, they are focused on environment, on animals, conservation, uh, things I love. We'll be going bushwalking all around this area, uh, trying to spot some elephants in their natural environment without annoying them, without uh, exploiting them, just respecting them. There are also some leopards, so we'll be sleeping inside here with the threat of leopards. I'm just joking. I, they're very shy animals, they won't come towards humans unless threaten it. We have lights and electricity just four hours per day from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Now is the electricity time, so we are charging all our devices. I have to charge the laptop too. Uh, we don't have signal. The kettle doesn't work because of the electricity. So they brought us, uh, I don't have it, thermos with hot water inside for making us the coffee. So it's almost dinner time. They're gonna pick us up at 
A, we might get lost since it's complete dark. She is ready. Let's see. Wow. Wow. So we'll be waking up at uh, six probably because we we're going like bushwalking to exploring the surrounding. Good night. <laughs> try to spot some wildlife, especially elephants. So we are following the footprints and apparently the guides can smell if the elephant has passed by. Very pretty touch bed. Crashing on the with the bed. So we just spotted some elephants. They were a bit far away from us, just over the hill. So we are trying to go around to spot them from the back. They have a very powerful hearing and also smell. So they are definitely smelling us. That's why they are they are going away. It might be a bit incredible, but they are going before us. To smell if the elephants are close by. I don't know how they do that. But yeah, they are going before like 10, 15 meters. They make us some signs according to if there are elephants or not and we can go further otherwise they come back and we change the route. So we've been waiting there like 20, 25 minutes uh, because we were clearly hearing the elephants uh, moving in front of us but the problem is that the elephants are not trained and they are and we are not in a safari with the jeepneys so if we get too close they will 100% attack us so we don't want to bother them and that's the closest we can get. However, we were, we were clearly seeing them on the top of the hills. Apparently there were three elephants, at least two males. The fact that uh, the two guides can smell the elephants. I was a bit sceptic. I, I wasn't a bit understanding how they could smell the elephants, but now we start like smelling something. I don't know if it is like the poo of the elephants. But it's definitely something that I would associate with elephants. But if I wanted to see like elephants super closely, I could have come to a place where they beat them or they, they nourish them, which is exactly what I don't want to do in my life. Uh, the beauty of seeing animals in their, in their wild environment is respecting them and seeing them from distance. So I really enjoy this walk. So this is the pathway that elephant just created beside our home. <laughs> and meanwhile, we were walking in the forest to look for elephants. So we just missed the elephant outside our home for like 15, 20 minutes. Normally I am super fussy with the breakfast because I want to eat a lot. I want to have nice and a lot of food, but <laughs> here I am struggling. They just brought us the third course of the breakfast. I'm super curious about this and this, which of course I don't remember what they are. Do you remember? Sambal? Both? This is spicy, this is not spicy. They have um, another one. And before this I didn't took any picture but they brought us kind of a quite watery porridge. It was a bit septic at the start. But it was really delicious. They said that it's made out of uh, uh, red millet flour and coconut milk. Coconut milk. I had to buy the red millet flour powder in Sri Lanka because I want to redo it since it was really delicious back in Italy because I, I think we can find the flour in Italy. Have you ever had like a square of rice? Mm. Going down to the base camp because we're gonna have a cooking lesson. Let's see what we cook today.
So that's what rice, that's papadam, which is uh, like a fried chickpeas flour. This is dal, made out of lentils and pulses. This is uh, brinjal, bring, bring, brinjal modu. modu. Chicken and tempted potatoes that I cooked. So we are trying the tempted potatoes that I cooked. Good, chef kiss. Mm. Not spicy as I thought. Good. I could live of just uh, tapadam and dal for the rest of my life. So they told us that we were going for a short walk to a viewpoint. This is the viewpoint. But they organized this. So we have the tea, the coffee, the milk, uh, the sugars, uh, biscuits. No! My WhatsApp number? Send that? Yeah, yeah. Okay.